सो दैट वॉज वन सेगमेंट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन सॉल्व दैट मीन्स अब आस्किंग अबाउट ट्यूबर क्लोजेस द सेकेंड सेगमेंट इज द आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ द ब्रेसेस राइट वॉट आर द कॉमन ब्रेसेस द कॉमन स्प्लिट्स विच आर यूज इन ऑर्थोपेडिक प्रैक्टिस दैट कुड बी आस्ट फ्रॉम यू द फर्स्ट वन विच आई हैव ऑलरेडी आस्ड इज अबाउट द डेवलपमेंटल डिस्प्लेजिया ऑफ द हिप ज्वाइंट द नेम ऑफ द स्प्लिट ओवर हेयर इज पालिक हार्नेस एंड दिस पालिक हार्नेस इज इंडिकेटेड इन developmental dysplasia of the hip joint so how will you identify a palic harness based on its the palic harness is identified based on the positioning of the thigh you know whenever the hip joints of the thigh are kept in abduction they are held in abduction and immobilized then it is known as palic harness all right and what is the uh, indication for this is the developmental dysplasia of the hip joint most commonly in case of newborn so that is one question for identification another one are the braces around the trunk of the body so braces around the trunk commonly are used in scoliosis so the indication obviously is going to be scoliotic but there are two braces which could be provided to you in the form of images one is around the trunk only no cervical immobilization so that would be a boston brace and this boston brace is also known as tls brace TLS that means thoraco lumbo sacral immobilization on the other hand there is a immobilization of the cervical column also and this brace would be identified as CTLS that is Milwaukee brace a Milwaukee brace is again used in scoliotic deformity although the indications are different but here there is a immobilization of the cervical thoracic lumbar and sacral column all of them are immobilized so these are the braces for scoliotic deformities another braces which are very commonly asked very commonly framed nowadays is that of a ctev right congenital telepathic equinovarus ctev and how will you identify a ctev brace if there are two a pair of shoes which are connected by a bar simple it is for ctev now the splints which are used in ctev one is dennis brown splint now this dennis brown splint how you will identify is the two shoes connected by a bar in between so you can see there is a bar in between on the other hand the another one is sfab that is steen beak foot abduction brace this is also used in case of ctv but there are slight differences like instead of a bar there is a rod and the abduction of the both the uh, both the foot both the feet are almost up to 90 degree they are more abducted right sfab so sfab as well as dennis brown both of them are used in ctv so this is how you can identify a splint for ctv another splint or a brace is the ankle foot orthosis which already you know that this ankle foot orthosis also known by the name of ankle foot splint is used in case of foot drop the indication is foot drop that means common peroneal nerve injury or common peroneal nerve palsy in order to prevent the fixed plantar flexion of the ankle on the other hand here as you can identify or you can very clearly see that the knuckles are bent that means the metacarpophalangeal joints are flexed and immobilized so the name of this splint obviously would be the knuckle bender splint and this knuckle bender splint is used in the immobilization or in the management of ulnar nerve injury right ulnar nerve injury this knuckle bender splint is used so this is just for the purpose of identification right another one which is very again very very commonly asked splint is the cock up splint so many times this question has been asked and this cock up splint is used in the management of radial nerve injury why and how you will identify this cock up splint when the wrist is kept in extension so any splint which is holding the wrist in extension would be termed as cock up splint so these are the two frames of the question that we have talked about one is identification of the brace first one was tuberculosis so hopefully you will be able to identify all the braces which are kept in your likely to be kept in your examination then the third segment of the question is that of a cast application you know in orthopedic practice ye bahut common hota hai ki conservative management is done by the application or immobilization of the limb in the cast that is plaster of paris now these cast which are likely to be given to you in the examination one is the patellar tendon bearing cast you know the ptb cast so how will you identify this patellar tendon bearing cast if there is a cast applied below the level of the knee that means the knee is not immobilized knee is kept free 
but the cast is applied all the way up to the tibial condyles that means the condyler holding cast so this is how you will identify a ptb cast and the indication for this patellar tendon bearing cast is actually the tibial diaphyseal fracture it is the tibial diaphyseal fractures right for ptb now hota kya hai ki questions related to the patellar fractures are asked very commonly or patellar fractures are treated by to usme patellar tendon bearing cast they used to give in the options because the examiner wants to confuse you हो सकता है कि पटेलर फ्रैक्चर का मैनेजमेंट पटेलर टेंडन बियरिंग कास्ट से हो नो फॉर द पटेलर फ्रैक्चर सिलिंड्रिकल कास्ट इज यूज्ड। ऑन द अदर हैंड वी आर हैविंग अनदर कास्ट व्हिच इज नोन बाय द नेम ऑफ सिलिंड्रिकल कास्ट एंड दिस सिलिंड्रिकल कास्ट इज आइडेंटिफाइड बाय मींस हाउ विल यू आइडेंटिफाई सिलेंड्रिकल कास्ट दैट इट इज अगेन अ बिलोनी सॉरी लोअर लिम कास्ट विच इज एनक्लोजिंग द एंटायर नी जॉइंट नी जॉइंट को एनक्लोज करता है फ्रॉम द मिड लेवल ऑफ द था ऑल द वे अप टू द लेवल ऑफ द एंकल स्पेसिफिकली फाइव सेंटीमीटर्स अब द लेवल ऑफ द मीडियल मेलुलस बट हेयर द नी इज इमोबलाइज इन एक्सटेंशन यू नो दिस इज द ओनली कास्ट वेयर द नी इज कैप्ट इन एक्सटेंशन इन ऑल द अदर लोअर लिम कास्ट जिसमें कि नी को आप इमोबलाइज करते हो द नी इज कैप्ट इन अराउंड फिफ्टीन डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्लेक्शन एक्सेप्ट सिलेंड्रिकल कास्ट एंड द सिलेंड्रिकल कास्ट इंडिकेशन इज पटेला फ्रैक्चर्स The indication for the cylindrical cast is patellar fracture. So hopefully, the lower limb cast है आपके उसमें ये दो ही cast which are likely to be framed in your examination, likely to be kept in your examination. One is cylindrical, other one is PTB. एक और cast आपको दिया जा सकता है related to the lower limb and that is going to be the hip spica splint. Now hip spica basically is used in the management of fractures shaft of the shaft of the femur, fracture shaft of femur in case of children, right? और हाउ विल यू आइडेंटिफाई दिस उसमें देर विल बी एंक्लोजर ऑफ द एबडोम देर विल बी एंक्लोजर ऑफ द पेल्विस देर विल बी एंक्लोजर ऑफ द एंटायर लोअर लिम बट हाफ ऑफ द लोअर लिम ऑन दैट मीन्स ऑल द वे अब द लेवल ऑफ द नी ऑन द ऑपोजिट साइड ऑल्सो लाइक इफ दिस इज द इंडिविजुअल इफ दिस इज द ट्रंक ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल देन द कास्ट इज अप्लाइड ऑल द वे इंक्लोजिंग द पेल्विस अपार्ट फ्रॉम द पेल्विस देर विल बी अ लोअर लिम इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑल द वे अप टू द एंकल एंड हाफ ऑफ द कास्ट is applied on above the level of the knee joint so this entire lower limb up right from the pelvis is enclosed inside the cast that is hip spica cast this is the kind of the image which we have already talked about multiple of the times in the management as far as upper limb cast are concerned again very very commonly kept in your examination one is that of the scaphoid cast both of them are below elbow cast but one is scaphoid cast and how will you identify a scaphoid cast that the thumb is kept in abduction and the wrist in dorsiflexion so the wrist is kept in dorsiflexion the thumb in abduction as if you are holding a glass so that is the reason why it is called as glass holding cast other cast is also known as colis cast and how will you identify a colis cast that the wrist is kept in palmar flexion ulnar deviation like this and this is the reason why it is called as hand shaking cast the wrist is kept in palmar flexion ulnar deviation right as well as in pronation so this is how you will identify a colis cast so above above uh, that means uh, for the upper limb there are two cast which are very importantly kept or might be kept in your examination one is that of a scaphoid other one is that of the colies right and these are the differences in between the two so that was the third segment of the question the first one was tuberculosis second one was identification of a brace or a splint and the third one is identification of the cast for immobilization now the fourth segment of the question is related to the infections the bone or the joint infections now this is very clear like a, a, at any point if there is a uh, term which is related sinus given to you in orthopedics like sinus with a bony spicule drainage of the abscess is provided to you then the answer for that question obviously is the chronic osteomyelitis right so how will you identify a chronic osteomyelitis on the x rays one is the sequestrum which is a dark segment a uh, increased dense segment of the bone surrounded by the granulation tissue so there are questions which are likely to be framed on sequestrum apart from this there could be a question asked on involucrum and you already know what the involucrum is that it is a, a, a bony wall around the sequestral or the inflammatory tissue inside the or an in, uh, infective tissue inside the bone that is involucrum all right then the cloaky and the sinus so these are all the clinical features of the uh, chronic osteomyelitis which could be kept in your examination 
So chronic osteomyelitis related questions are two. One is giving you the x-ray, asking for the identification. Second is long question with the sinus history. Answer for that question is chronic osteomyelitis. Now as far as septic arthritis, that means joint infection is concerned. There are several points which are important for you to remember. Like knee is the most common site. The most common site is the knee joint for septic arthritis. And apart from knee joint, <coughs> The hip is the second most common side to be affected. That is point number one. Now, point number two about septic arthritis is that, you know, uh, emergency investigation in case of a child, emergency investigation in case of a child is always ultrasonography. Now, you, you already might be thinking of that instead that uh, MRI is the investigation of choice. This is true. But as far as emergency investigation for this, uh, septic arthritis in the hip joint is concerned in case of a child then ultrasonography is considered to be the better investigation the fast investigation right acute osteomyelitis you know these are several of the points which are important which you already know about but what is likely to be kept in your examination are the long clinical features related to this question but more importantly metaphysical involvement that metaphysis is the most common site to be affected by acute osteomyelitis right so the third question is based on the infective conditions and in those infective conditions, particularly what is likely to be asked in relation to the chronic osteomyelitis, right? Then the fifth segment, you know, the fifth segment, there is going to be one question always and that is based on the tumor identification. You need not to worry too much about it. Epiphyseal tumor, you see, epiphyseal tumor and there is no growth plate visibility it is GCT, the giant cell tumor, that is osteoclastoma. Epiphyseal tumor, no growth plate seen. It is giant cell tumor. Similarly, uh, central core is increasingly dense, but outer peripheries are less dense. So this is a feature of osteosarcoma. It is a malignant tumor. And this is actually the sunburst appearance or a rising sun appearance, right? <coughs> then again, epiphyseal tumor, but the growth plates are still visible, then this is chondroblastoma. So this is how you will identify it. If the tumor is there in the epiphysis, but the growth plate is visible, it is chondroblastoma. If the tumor is there in the epiphysis, but the growth plate is obliterated, it is giant cell tumor. Other than this, if there is a tumor which is projecting from the metaphysis of the long bone, all right, growing away from the joint, answer for this question is osteochondroma straight away means you need not to give a second thought related to this particular topic. It is osteochondroma. While if there is a radiolucent point that you see in the long bone cortex, then the answer for this question is osteoid osteoma. So this is how you will identify a osteoid osteoma x-ray, right? Giant cell tumor, pe, they have asked the question. They have asked the question on osteosarcoma multiple of the time. They have asked the question on chondroblastoma. They have asked the question on osteochondroma also this year. So they used to ask this question out of this tumor just on the basis of its identification on the x-rays, right? Then again, a shepherd crook deformity where the femur is typically bent as if you are seeing a stick of the shepherd it, as well as the ground glass appearance. Both of them goes in the favor of fibrous dysplasia. So fibrous dysplasia related questions are very, very imminent means there is no a uh, problem in identifying these kind of the x-rays just on the basis of its identification you you can mark the correct answer like similarly uh, related to a periosteal reaction seen in the form of a tumor along the long bone that means diaphyseal involvement then Ewing sarcoma is the answer for this question so as far as tumor identification related questions are concerned that is segment fifth of your question Majority of the times you will be given a benign tumor for the identification. If at all they are asking about the malignant tumor, they can give you two options. One is that of the osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma mean you might get the x-rays which are, which are blunt in identification. You cannot have a differential. You cannot get confused that this is not osteosarcoma. It's going to be a, a pinpoint answer for marking the correct answers um, for that particular question. And the other malignant tumor that they can give is Ewing sarcoma. And in, in Ewing sarcoma, there is diaphyseal involvement. The age of the child is on the younger side slightly, right? And uh, there will be a periosteal reaction in the form of an onion peel appearance seen on the long bone diaphysis, particularly in the femur or in the tibia. So these are the things which are 
ऑब्वियसली गोइंग टू बी प्रोवाइडेड टू यू इन दी एक्स रेज राइट सो ये हो गया आपका सेगमेंट फिफ्थ द फर्स्ट वन वॉज ट्यूबर क्लोसिस द सेकेंड वन वॉज इन्फेक्शन द थर्ड वन वॉज ब्रेसिस द फोर्थ वन वॉज द कास्ट एंड द फिफ्थ वन वॉज दैट ऑफ द ट्यूबर now comes the sixth one and this is this is considered to be the most important one and that is the related to the nerve injury now this is something which you have already talked about which we have already talked about here or you have already learned everything related to this particular topic here a quick revision on how the questions could be framed like as you can see this is a claw hand partial claw and this partial claw is because of ulnar nerve injury there is no doubt doubt about that similarly card test could be given uh then book test could be given from and sign could be given claw hand could be given for the purpose of identification to mark the answer as ulnar nerve similarly the pen test could be given the ape thumb deformity could be given the pointing index could be given the kilonaven sign could be given the benediction sign could be given for you to mark the answer as median nerve injuries right as far as the fracture related nerve injuries are concerned this is one table of yours अब इसमें होता क्या है कि इंस्टेड ऑफ आस्किंग दैट व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ द नर्व इंजर्ड इन प्रोक्सिमल ह्यूमरस फ्रैक्चर दे कैन गिव यू द एक्सरे जहां पे देयर इज अ प्रोक्सिमल ह्यूमरस फ्रैक्चर एंड यू हैव टू मार्क द आंसर एज एक्सिलरी नर्व इंजरी दे कैन गिव यू एन एक्सरे जहां पे शोल्डर डिसलोकेशन हुआ हुआ है एंड दे कैन एंड यू हैव टू मार्क द आंसर एज एक्सिलरी नर्व इंजरी दे कैन गिव यू द एक्सरे ऑफ अ सुपरा कंडाला फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द ह्यूमरस एंड यू हैव टू मार्क द आंसर एज एंटीरियर इंटरऑशियस नर्व इंजरी दे कैन गिव यू द एन एक्स रे ऑफ द प्रोक्सिमल फेबुलर फ्रैक्चर वेयर यू हैव टू मार्क द आंसर एज कॉमन पेरोनियल नर्व इंजरी और राइट सो दिस इज हाउ द क्वेश्चन आर गेटिंग फ्रेम टूडे इंस्टेड ऑफ अ रिटर्न वन लाइनर दे आर गिविंग यू द एक्स रे दे आर गिविंग यू दे आर प्रोवाइडिंग यू द क्लिनिकल प्रोफाइल ऑफ द पिक्चर एंड देन दे आर सीकिंग फॉर द आंसर फ्रॉम यू right so quick revision although this is one something that you should be able to know like shoulder dislocation fracture proximal humerus axillary nerve without any doubt fracture shaft of the humerus radial nerve then supracondylar fracture anterior interosseous nerve elbow dislocation ulnar is the most common nerve to be affected montagia fracture dislocation posterior interosseous nerve which is a motor branch of the radial nerve wokeman ischemic again anterior interosseous nerve the posterior dislocation of the hip joint sciatic nerve then the wrist dislocation is the median nerve and finally the knee dislocation or the injury might result in the common peroneal nerve injury right so they are giving you the x rays and then they are asking you what is the name of the nerve which are likely to be injured or what are the features of that nerve injury which could be associated with this injury to the bone राइट एक क्वेश्चन इस पूरी टेबल में से मींस ऑल दो वी कैन नॉट से डायरेक्टली बट एवरी टाइम यू गो थ्रू द प्रीवियस ईयर क्वेश्चन आस्ट इस टेबल में से एक क्वेश्चन हमेशा आपको मिलेगा राइट right?